Hi, in this video lecture, let's talk about amortization. Amortization is a debt repayment scheme in which the original amount borrowed is repaid by making equal payment periodically. So we'll utilize the same formula with annuity, where P is the present value, R is the interest rate, M is the number of payments made in a year, and time T is always expressed in years. Let's look at example number one. A 13,270,000 loan at 12% interest compounded annually is to be amortized every year for eight years. Question is, what is the yearly payment and construct an amortization table? So to work with this, we always start with a given, listing all the variables needed in our formula. So we start with the present value P. This is 13,270,000 pesos. The interest rate R is equal to 12%. In decimal value, that would be 0 0.12. Time T, we have, we have 8 years as indicated in the problem. And the number of payments made in a year, this is compounded annually. So this is only once a year. Now, this is our formula. As mentioned, this is the same as the formula used in annuity. Now, to simplify my solution, I always list down the periodic rate that is R divided by M. This is the interest rate you pay every time you make your periodic payment. So this is the quotient of R and M that is equals this cell divided by this cell. Press enter and I have still the same value of 12% or 0.12 because this is made annually so that is the exact interest rate in a year. Total number of payments, this is the product of time and M. This is now equal to this cell multiplied to this cell. So we have a value of 8 as the total payments. It does make sense because you are paying compounded annually for 8 years. Now let's work out our formula on this spreadsheet. This is now equals. Let me set up my numerator divided by my denominator so that we start with the inputs on our numerator that is p multiplied to the periodic rate so this is the p value multiplied to the periodic rate r over m that's the numerator now we proceed to our denominator this will be one minus this is in grouping so we place an open and close parenthesis followed by the exponent and then the exponent should be placed in grouping again. So another open and close parenthesis. Let's start with this first grouping. That's 1 plus the periodic rate. So 1 plus the periodic rate located here. And then we go to our exponent. That is a negative product of Tm. So that's minus the product of Tm located on this cell. So we check before heating enter. This is P value. This is R over M. And this is divided by open parenthesis 1 minus a grouping of 1 plus periodic rate. And then the exponent should be placed in a group that's a negative Tm. So my inputs are correct. Press enter and we have a value of 2,671,288.71. This is rounded off to two decimal place. Now just to make sure that this is the value, I can recheck my solution using my calculator. So when I make use of my calculator, this is how you do it. So we have the numerator and the denominator. So on my numerator, I have my p-value. That is 13,270,000 multiplied to a fraction, and that is 0.12 divided by the m-value is 1. Working out with my denominator, I have 1 minus in grouping. This is 1 plus. And then we have a fraction of R over M. So that this is 0.12 divided by 1. And then followed by my exponent. The symbol used in my calculator is this one, the power symbol. And my exponent should be placed in a grouping so that this is a negative T is 8 multiplied to 
m is 1. So this is how I place it on my calculator. When I hit enter, I have a value of 2,671,288.70506. So this is rounded off to two decimal place. On my Excel, this is the same and exact value placed on this cell. It was just rounded up to 0.71, but the real value is still with this exact decimal number. So, the yearly payment will now be 2,671,288.71. Now, to construct an amortization table, we need this following columns. Due date would be pertaining to the total number of payments. So, if I have 8 total number of payments, my due date periods would be from 1 to 8. Then I have the total value R. That's the column. And then I have periodic interest. This means I'm going to show the interest payment every time I make my periodic payment. So that this principle is actually the difference of the periodic payment and the periodic interest. I'm also going to show the outstanding balance every time I make my periodic payment. So let's start. The periodic payment would be equal to what we have computed. So let me click the cell, press enter. Now this value is always the same because it's a periodic payment. So I'm going to copy it. But before I copy the formula, let me lock this cell so that when I drag the formula down, it will still be the same. So I'm going to place a dollar sign before number 9. Then press enter. Then I can now drag the formula or copy the formula by using my pointer. There you go. So again, the periodic payment is always the same for the total number of payments, which is 8. Now, before proceeding with periodic interest and outstanding balance, let me just complete my outstanding balance here. This is the present value or the total amount of the loan. So on this yellow box, I have 13,270,000. And then my periodic interest is the interest I am paying every time I make my periodic payment. So this would be equals R over M. So we have a value for R divided by M. It should still be 0.12 or 12%. And when I compute for my periodic interest, this is now the interest applied to my outstanding balance. So this is outstanding balance multiplied to my periodic interest, press enter, and I have 1,592,400. This is a big amount of interest when you have a loan of 13 million. If we compute for the principal amount, this is the periodic payment minus the periodic interest. So this means that from your periodic payment of 2,671,288.71, what you paid on your outstanding balance is actually 1,078,888.71. And that 1,592,400 is the interest you actually paid from your outstanding balance. So after your first periodic payment, the outstanding balance now is the difference of 13,270 and your principal amount. So this is now equal to 12,191,111.29. It's crazy when you're working with big amount of money, but let's continue with our amortization table. So again, to compute for the periodic interest, this is the interest you're paying every time you make your periodic payment. This is always equal to the outstanding balance. So now the new outstanding balance is 12,191,111.29 multiplied to your periodic rate. That's 0.12. Then press enter. And then the principal now is the difference of the periodic payment and the periodic interest. Such that the new outstanding balance is now equal to the previous outstanding balance minus the principal amount you paid on the second periodic payment. 
press enter and you now have a new outstanding balance of 10,982,755.95. Since I'm working with a spreadsheet, I could simply create my formula and copy it on my remaining cells. So to compute for my periodic interest, let me fix my formula here. Since I am multiplying the outstanding balance and the periodic rate, I'm going to need to lock the cell 0.12. So on my formula, this I15 is the location of my 0.12. Now before I drag this formula, let me place a dollar sign before this number, row 15, so that when I drag this formula down, this cell location won't move. So when I press enter and copy the formula, there, I have these values which is not yet completed because the other cells are empty. Again, periodic interest is taken from the previous outstanding balance multiplied to this periodic rate. So that if I complete my principal amount, this is the difference of the periodic payment and the periodic interest. So I can simply copy this formula placed on this upper cell. And there you go. It's not yet updated because the outstanding balance is not yet updated as well. But when I copy this formula placed on this cell, so the formula is the difference of the previous outstanding balance and the principal amount. So let me copy this. There you go. My amortization table is now updated. So let me explain what's happening on this table. Again, if we go back to our first payment, you made a periodic payment of 2,671,288.71. And out of this periodic payment, the interest you paid is actually 1,592,400. And that the only principal amount you paid is 1,078,888.71. Now, this principal will now be deducted to the outstanding balance so that you now have a new outstanding balance of 12,191,111.29. This amount will be multiplied to the periodic interest, 12% or 0.12. So this is the value. And that to take the principal amount, you now subtract again the periodic payment and the computed periodic interest on your second payment. So this is the principal amount you paid out of your periodic payment, 2,671,288.71. So as you notice, the principal amount is actually increasing as you are making your periodic payment and your periodic interest is decreasing as you complete your periodic payment because your outstanding balance is also decreasing. So every time your outstanding balance is decreasing, the interest placed on this outstanding balance should also be decreasing. On your last periodic payment, you'll now end up with a zero outstanding balance. So this is example number one.